Good afternoon, friends. Here we are back on the 66 again. Now it's time to get this engine out of, the, out of the bike. Should be just the four bolts. That's all that's left. I have gone through and backed the wiring off of this thing. I've tagged everything, kind of moved everything around so it's out of the way. So I've got the four engine mount bolts and then the upper mount bolt here. And with those removed, I should be able to remove this motor. I have taken off the rectifier from the other side, also tagged that. So I'm pretty free and clear for the most part. I think I'm in the home stretch at this point. But I know I gotta get this done. I gotta get this engine out so that way I can get it to my buddy. He's gonna take the transmission and the engine by the end of the week. And you know, I'm kinda in crunch time, unfortunately. So I'm gonna work on getting this thing apart now. I've got my wrenches set out here and maybe I have both of them. Here we go. We'll attempt to loosen these bolts. Now with the four lower motor mounts completely loose, I've taken all the nuts off the bottom, so I just have the studs hanging in place. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this top motor mount, and with that being removed, the engine should be free. It should be ready to be removed. So I'm gonna go ahead and jog up here, remove this top motor mount, and let's see where we can go. Now with the engine just sitting in the frame, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the lift here. I'm gonna get my cart out, and then I'm going to push the engine out the right hand side of the bike and get it onto that cart. That way, you know, it's, I can wheel it around the shop and it's ready to go. One part that I had not previously addressed was the generator. I honestly thought that I could tip the motor up enough to be able to get it out properly. Unfortunately, with the front motor mount studs in place here, there's not enough room to actually be able to tip the engine enough to be able to take it out with the generator on. As far as I'm aware, I could be wrong. I know that the studs that are on that are super long. They're not the correct front mount studs in my opinion. I could be wrong. I mean, there was at least a good inch hanging out the bottom of the front bolts underneath it all. Maybe that's correct. Maybe it wasn't. I'm sure it can't be. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and remove this generator now just so I can get those bolts out of, the, out of the way and then be able to tip this motor out. 
All right, I did run into a little bit of a snag with removing the generator. Now on the other side, on the cam cover side, there are two studs that run through into the generator itself. You should be able to remove those two studs and then pull the generator out, based on what I read in the manual. Now, unfortunately, this did not come apart that way at all. So what I ended up having to do was take the back side of the generator off and disassemble it this way and get into the inside of the cam cover and take out the gear from the armature here and pull these units apart. The end of the housing is still stuck in there and I feel that the bearings are just welded in place, probably from you know longevity or use or whatnot. I'm not exactly sure, but they are in there way too tight to push out. I didn't want to hammer on anything. I didn't want to press on it too hard. I didn't want to bust anything. That was my biggest thing. I didn't want to break anything. So I did go in through the cam cover side and then pull it apart and have disassembled the entire generator, unfortunately. Not something I wanted to do, but you know I probably needed to. It is very, very dirty inside. There's a ton of oil and grease in there and that's probably not good for the generator itself. So those parts will all have to be cleaned now and then it'll get reassembled once I actually get that cover back to me. So now I feel that this engine is ready for removal. I've got all of the motor mounts off of this motor. So I should be able to pull it through the right side of the bike and put it onto its cart. And we're gonna attempt that now. Well friends, as you can see, the engine is now removed and the bike is just that much more naked. One of the things I did want to check on the bottom of the engine was the belly numbers and they are actually matched belly numbers. I wasn't sure, I figured they were just because the motor looked like it was complete and in good shape. And they're both, you know, 66 belly numbers, so that's a plus. Um, from here, the motor and trans are gonna get packed up and they'll be ready for my buddy to pick up. And then I need to go ahead and just strip the rest of this bike down. This bike has to be a bare frame in the next few days here so I can get another bike on the lift. Hopefully we can get her done. I think so. At this point, this is to me the easy part. Now I'll just have to tag all the wires and go through and make sure I have everything unhooked the right way and flag everything with labels so that way it can go back together or I'm thinking about rewiring this thing with a different kit, but if I tag it all, then that way I can run all my wires and I'll know exactly where everything goes. So that's kind of the idea too with tagging it. Anyway guys, you know, another short video, another short, you know, episode of tearing down this 66. And of course I appreciate you guys following along. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. 
If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I just looked at my analytics again this morning and it shows that like 95% of the people viewing my videos are not subscribed. So, you know, do yourself a favor, hit that button. That way you can see my content all the time. You know, if you like what I'm doing and you are subscribed, hit the bell icon too and hit all the reminders. That way when I launch a new video or something's going to premiere, you'll get notified first before anybody else. Of course, if you haven't followed me yet on you know, eBay, Facebook, and Instagram, I'm on all those under Rocky's Chop Shop. If you're looking for parts, I sell parts on eBay. I've got a lot of stuff on there. They've got, I don't know, 1,400 items or something like that on there right now. So if there's something you're looking for, maybe I have it, maybe not. Anyway, all I appreciate you following along. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one.